mighty story be on my way. Hallelujah. That you come into the house of God to worship with my brothers and sisters in the Lord. Hallelujah. It's such an honor and a blessing to be here today. Hallelujah. Let's not take for granted the opportunity that we have today to worship our Savior, to worship our King. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We can be anywhere else, but thank God we're in the house of the Lord this morning. Let's come and come in this house with an expectancy. Let's come to this house with a heart of worship and praise. Hallelujah. Let's come to the Lord, see your hands to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's worship your sister Mandy Sue. We were waiting for this day. Yes. We're gathered in your name. Oh, 
Jesus. Praise be to God. Listen, we get excited about what the angels do. We do. When the angels are present, boy, we get a little pep in our step. Yes. Well, they've been here all morning long. Amen. They've been here all morning long, but you want to get excited about what the angels do? And the angels cry Oh, me To be lifted high Oh, me Think about it for a minute If the angels are always lifting them high 24-7 365 days a year Every minute of every second of every day let me tell you something. The people of God who've been given the sacrifice of a mighty Savior and a resurrection of a blessed King. Let me tell you something. We've got more to shout about. We've got more to praise about. We've got more to rejoice about this morning. Praise be to God. So we call it Palm Sunday. But we're not a normal church. No, we're not. We're not a normal church. So I'd love to sit here and tell you I'm going to give you tingling ears and talk about people laying down palms, tree branches, and all. I'm not going to do none of that stuff. I'm going to obey the Lord. Amen. Yes. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus, real quick, do me a favor. I want everybody to begin to reach up to the heavens, and I want you to begin to speak for Sister Tower. Uh, yeah, I don't care if you know her. I need you to move for God on be her behalf. Come on. God, touch right now. Move in that hospital room. Move in that ER, but I need a shot Lord, for the glory of your house. Not for man's sake, not for people's sake, but for your glory and the healing that you flow upon them. For, for your glory let the mercies of God shine down upon that room. It move as only you're able to do. We trust you. We trust you, Lord, because you've given us your word. The sense where two or more of your people gather together, you're in the midst. And God, I, I'm not trying to be rude, but may I remind you that with your stripes we are healed. We are made whole. We are restored. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. I pray continued healing upon Brother Proctor, Lord. Elder of God, man of God, touch and heal his body. Strengthen his mind, his spirit, and all. My God, you are perfect in every way. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You don't know right this morning? Ain't God good? His blessings are forever. Always. Praise God. Forever and amen. Forever and amen. My God, forever and amen. Thank you, Jesus. I wonder if you have your phylacteries on today. You? Yes. you you shouldn't have them on brother you have your phylacteries on today yes. he's going to say yeah <laughs> hope somebody does I don't know what that is you came to the right place
So I quit, stop singing. just titles. There's only one name. And his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. That's the only name with power, with authority, with dominion, with expectation. Yes. Amen. It's the name of Jesus Christ. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes. Saying the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. This is Jesus speaking. All therefore whatsoever they bid you observe. That observe and do, but do not ye after the works, for they say and do not. And notice, he said, don't just make it after the works that these guys are telling you about. That's not going to get you to heaven. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born and lay them on men's shoulders. What are they saying? Hey, they make sure that you gotta, you gotta, you gotta uh, wash your hands three hundred times a day, or you're not really a scribe or a Pharisee. 
you got to have the right top hat on and the right coat on or you're not ascribing the Pharisee. Now notice, I'm not talking about holiness on the inside and on the outside. I'm talking about having to have a certain garb on. So if you don't have the same suit I have on, you're going to help and I'm going to make it. And if you're not wearing the same thing Elder Sister Ross is wearing, y'all lady's going to hell and she's going to make it. That's what they were. They were saying, hey, you need to not only, you need to mimic me in every way. And if you don't, you're a failure. I got news for you. My shout nothing like your shout. I like the way you shout, but my legs will go up and I look like a chicken with its head cut off running around this place and shouting around this place. Ain't nothing going to get in my way. And if you're in my way, I'm sorry, but I'm either going to jump over you or slide around you or circle around you, but I'm going to do it the way God gave it to me. I hope to God you'll do it the way God gave it to you. But in this, they were saying, hey, there's so many things you got to do. You got to wash your hands six times before you eat. You got to wash your dishes three times before you do it. And you got to rinse it in separate sections. And you got to prepare your food 13 other different directions. Or you can't eat. How'd you like to live under those rules? And ladies, you just stare at the ground. Don't you ever raise your head. Because if you're following up your husband, you'll be staring at his legs and you'll know which direction you're supposed to get. So don't you, don't you raise your head any other way. Boy, oh, I got quiet in here. <laughs> That's what the scribes and the Pharisees believed. That's what they taught. You're going to do it my way. They put stuff on people that were just grievous, that were absolutely absurd. Absolutely strenuous, absolutely impossible. They couldn't even do it. They just justified why they could do it. You could. Well, the reason I can get away with what I told you not to do is because I'm bolder. Oh, you're a hypocrite. I got you. Thanks. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous to be born, and they lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Hey, you got to do this to get to heaven, but we're the important people, not you. But all their works they do for to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries. I told you you'd learn that word today. <laughs> and enlarge the borders of their garments. Look how big and wonderful I am. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts and the chief seats at the synagogues and greetings in the market and to be called men, Rabbi, Rabbi. But be not ye called Rabbi. For what is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren? And call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, for one is your master, even Christ. But he that is greatest among you, that one, that individual, shall be a servant. More importantly, that one shall be your servant. And whosoever shall exalt himself shall be abased. And he that shall humble himself shall be exalted. But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, you hypocrites. For you shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For you neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites. For you devour the widows' houses, and for the peasants make long prayers. Therefore, ye shall receive the greater damnation. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For you compass the sea and the land and make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more child of hell than yourselves. In other words, when you go and take somebody else's people and you proselyte, you not only send yourself, but you send them doubly cursed to hell. Hmm. Woe well, unto you, ye blind guides, which say, Whosoever shall swear by the temple, it is nothing. But whosoever shall swear by gold of the temple, he's a debtor. Yea, fools and the blind, for whatsoever is greater, the gold or the temple that, that sanctifies the gold. And whatsoever shall swear by the altar, it is nothing. But whosoever swear by the gift that is upon it, he's guilty. 
I could go on and on and on and on this morning about all the scribes and the Pharisees, hypocrites, as Christ called them multiple times. But instead this morning, I'm just going to go right into it and minister to you this morning on remembering your phylacteries. Remembering your phylacteries. Amen. I don't know what that word means. That's good. That means I'm in the right place. Amen. Sister Natalie, would you pray over the word this morning, please? Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. <laughs> if you know what the Torah is, the Torah is what? Anybody? The Torah is the first five books of the Bible. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. These books are known as the books of the law. And basically, the Lord has said multiple times, if you live alone by those books, only by those five, you're not going to make it to heaven. I'm not putting down the Jewish truth. I'm not putting down their culture. I'm not putting down their people. I'm just telling you as Gentiles and me as a Gentile that the Word of God tells me we, have got, we cannot live by the law alone. There has got to be more than just the first five books of the Bible. There is more, and that more is Jesus Christ. That more is now Jesus living in you as the Holy Ghost. That more is you being repented, baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin and receiving the baptism of the Holy Ghost which we read in scripture every time they receive the Holy Ghost it was evidenced by speaking in other tongues let me assure you that if anybody is preaching anything else they are lying to you they are deceiving you and they are taking you in a path to hell it is not worthy to walk in a path that has not been proven by the word of God but I will tell you that there are lying tongues and lying people and deceptive people out there that are tormented by spirits, that are hindered by falsehoods, and that have been received demonic direction, and they will argue with you, and they will justify you, and they will take scripture completely out of context and try to make you think that the truth that we know is real because it's written plain and simple. It's been proven time after time. It's been fulfilled through scripture. But they'll try to tell you it's wrong. Oh, you don't have to repent. Or, oh, wait, that's all you have to do. Here's what I got to do to repent. Raise your hand. Poof. Oh, that's good. I'm going to heaven now. So you can live like a dog, act like a dog, chew like a dog. You can treat people like a dog and you think you're getting into the gates of heaven. Somehow it doesn't align with the word. See, that's what it is. Nowhere in the Bible, this became, I'm going to call names today and I'm not, I'm not looking to, to upset anybody or trouble anybody, but I can assure you that either we're living according to the word of God or we're living to the, according to what our flesh wants us to do. Our flesh tells us all we've got to do is raise a hand or say a quick prayer and put we're into heaven. But that's not what the Bible says. Jesus himself said, unless a man is born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Then he went on told Nicodemus, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That water is not a mother's womb because that is a placenta. That is filled with much more than just some water. That is a fluid that is made by the mother to nourish and protect a child. That is not the water that Jesus was talking about. I know because Nicodemus said, can I enter a second time into a mother's womb? And Jesus said, no, that's not the process. The process is that verily, verily I seem to thee, the wind bloweth where it listens, and you know not from which it comes. He was saying, listen, you need to be repented, you need to be baptized, you need to receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Don't worry about where it comes from, just know it's from God. Don't worry about how it came about, just know it's from God. Don't worry about whether uh, somebody else is watching you or hearing what you're saying. Listen, I've got news for you. I'd rather run to this altar and repent and care less what everybody hears. You hear all this? So what? You hear I lied? So what? You hear I committed adultery? So what? You hear I murdered? So what? I'm going to make it to heaven whether you hear it or not. It's about making it to heaven. 
But they get some trouble brewing. And the trouble is simple. The trouble is simple. You've forgotten your phylacteries. Yes. I love that look y'all give me. <laughs> no, he's, he thinks he's smart. He started using big words when he preaches. <laughs> You've forgotten your phylacteries. A phylactery is two small cubes shaped. And they're shaped into small little box cases. Containing the Torah text written on parchment, which according to Deuteronomy 6 and 8, Deuteronomy 11, 18, and Exodus 13, verses 9 and 16, are to be worn by male Jews 13 years old and older. And the reason they wear them around their neck with a string and then they dangle down each side, the reason they wear them is to remind them from the Young age of 13, who God is. Thank you, Jesus. They have to wear these boxes with the Torah written on small parchment paper. And it's rolled up on each side to make sure you have enough. And the Bible says that all the male Jews, they need to wear this phylactery around their necks. So that consistently, when sin would come to them, they go, oh, wait, I, I can't do that. I, there's God. He, he's not going to let me do that. That's not acceptable. I don't want to do that. I, I want to please I want to please God. He goes a little bit further. Not only is it something that hangs around your neck to remind you of God, it hangs around the neck so everybody else knows. Don't you come to me with that garbage. Don't you come to me with that lie. Don't you come to me with those jokes. Don't you come to me with those thoughts because I'm the child of God. I'm the vessel of the Most High. I'm a child that God has ordained, anointed, and appointed, and I will not fail my Savior. I will not let my Savior down. He has done too much for me. What's that old He's done so much for me. I cannot tell it all. Let me tell you something. God has done so much for me. I don't know about you, but I can't tell it all. And I praise to God. If he doesn't bless me another blessing, he's going to bless me with salvation. And he's going to bless me with his gifting. He's going to bless me with his love. He's going to bless me with his mercy. And I will not go back. Amen. Don't follow the man, follow the God. Amen. Yes. Don't lead after man, man will fail you. Man will let you down, man will disappoint you. But God, God will never let you down. God will never disappoint you. God will never hinder your walk. God will never hinder your life. And if you say, well, God's hindered my life, God's to serve me. You're serving the wrong God. You're looking at the things you are not to be looking at. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying you forgot to look at your phylacteries. Amen, yes. You forgot to look at the boxes that contain the word of God to remind you, hey, I'm a child of God. I'm a vessel of the most high. You forgot to remind everybody else around you, I'm a child of God. You know what we have now? I'm going to be blown honest. I'm sorry. It's not a sugar coating morning. I know I'm good at it. Come on, Pastor. You know what you have now? You know what your phylacteries are now? The way you speak, the way you act, the way you dress, the way you address, the way you fulfill, and the way you walk the Word of God. You should look like a child of God, act like a child of God, spit like a child of God, chew like a child of God, and pray like a child of God. Because if you're not, and I'm not talking about going through the motions. I'm talking about you better be what God has called you, ordained you, and appointed you to be. It's easy to say, I'm just a nobody. Guess what? Get in line. Preach it, yes. Truth. According to the word of God, if we continue to read in that scripture, we find all of us are a bunch of nobodies. All of us are a bunch of people that fall and fail and falter and sin and have to dust ourselves back up and go to a merciful God and repent it and get a wash all over of us again and continue our walk with God. Why is it you think when you fail God, you should just sit down in the water and in the sand and water away like a pig in the field? Get out of the field. Dust yourself off. Get back to the king. Get back to heaven. Get back to Savior. Get back to where you want to be. Hallelujah. Yes. God called you out of darkness. Out, out, out. Thank you, Jesus. And 
no point did he say, oh, it's okay. You go ahead. You, you've had a long week. You rest in the darkness for a little while. Come on now. Yes. Over and over and over and over and over and over and over in God's word. He said, be not partakers of the darkness, but be children of the light. In other words, you've got to walk the walk and rest in his arms. Hallelujah. He is light. Amen. He is not darkness. And I'm talking about evil. Not the darkness of man. Not the darkness of the night. I'm talking about you're either heaven bound or hell bound. Let me give you a description of hell. Jesus, yes. I'm not going to go into all the details. I'm going to tell you one actual fact. Hell is a darkness that you have never experienced. Yeah, but there's fire. You ever heard of a flame being so hot it's dark? Dark fire can get so hot. The purest fire, by, by the way, is blue. That's why a laser can't affect blue. Because when a laser comes across blue, the heat, the, the element, the abilities of blue absorbs it. It says, I'm stronger than you. No, 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 boo boo. But when a fire gets so much and burns so much, the soot in the darkness takes over. Yeah. Hell is not going to be all the flames like they used to show on the kids show. And they used to show on the radio. And all those other things we watch. And every other movie that they turned into a comedy that act like hell is a place to go like Club Med. Come on now, yeah. Only the worst and the most vile we'll ever get to. Hitler and Stalin and Chang Chi and all. Oh, they're going to be there, but I'm just going to be walking. It's going to be really hot. That's not the Bible's description of hell. That's Hollywood's. Come on now, and yes. we already know everything Hollywood's been doing has been outside of the will of God. Yes. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. They, they make you think hell is a, a kid's game. And, oh, let's make, a, let's make a TV show about Lucifer. And, oh, he's a good guy, but he just want, he did really bad guys. He's the one he comes after. What are we playing with, folks? What kind of game is this? This, this should never come into the eyesight of the church. These shows and these things would make the word of God dumb and ignorant, which you couldn't do if you paid a billion dollars to do. You can't make the word. The word of God stands true. It's you who is wrong. It's they who is wrong. Don't you try to change it in any other capacity. God knows what he's doing. They would hang these things. Age of 13. Come here, I know you're 19. Age of 13, Dad would walk up. And Dad wouldn't walk up and go, Hey, son, how you doing? Love, good to see you. He would come up and he would charge him. Listen to me. This is as serious a moment of your life ever has been. You know, when Dad gets serious, it's serious. Oh, wait, not this generation. Now you're just making fun of him and mocking behind his back. Let me tell you something. Train up a child in the way they should walk. Train up a child in the way. We should not have children back-mouthing and back-talking and all this stuff. Just because it's acceptable out there does not mean it's acceptable for a child of God. And the father will come up and he'll take the child of the high priest. And he'll present it before him. He'll say, what he tells you to do, you do. What he tells you not to do, you do not do. If you change anything, you'll feel the wrath of God. Ooh. You've been teaching me about God my whole life. The wrath of God? Ooh. You know what the wrath of God means? That means the purest anger. You thought we got angry? 
the purest anger. Now the difference between your anger and the purest anger is God's anger always comes with the purest love. He's not allowing discipline in your life because he hates you. He's allowing, or he's angry with you, or he's disappointed in you. He's allowing discipline in your life because you absolutely chose the life you chose. Am I making sense? So he'll take you, come with me, son, and they'll walk together. They'll walk with respect. And they'll bring up, stand up, brother. And he'll present him before the high priest. Stand up. And he'll present him before the high priest. And he'll step back in honor. And the high priest, get, get, get your, get your. And the high priest will put it on. And the high priest will, will speak over him. And not ask. He will demand loyalty to God. He will command him through scripture. Yes. Not through opinion, not through feeling. Right. He'll tell him what the expectations to wear God's word around his neck and in his life are. Yes. And in that moment, the young man has two choices. Receive God and live it. Or fail. When our young people, male, female, I don't care who you are, when you come to God, God puts his blessings and his callings on your life. You don't go to a high priest. You go to Christ. And Christ as our high priest then says, I will hang my name. I will hang my name upon you. Because I have chosen you. Because you have now said you have chosen. And now every day he walks, he needs to walk like a child of God. And when the enemy comes and says, don't serve him anymore, that's all garbage. What, that, what, that, what they said, it's a lie. That's your daddy's way. That's your daddy. That's the way he does it. He's old. Yes. You, you go out there in the world. You, you tell your own life. You be your own man. That's not according to the word of God. No, no, no. According to the word of God, for you to be a true man, you follow after Christ. Yes, amen. But when he's out in the world, when he's going to and fro out there in the world, and he's walking, and he's going, and the tempter comes before him. Hey, you don't have to be a man of your word, man. They'll get over it. Somebody else can do that stuff. Yeah, you don't have to pray. Listen, the older people are supposed to be the prayer warriors, not you younger people. You should be outside playing in the yard. Fasting? Are you kidding? There's cheeseburgers in this world. There's donuts. I think there's some downstairs. Come on. They won't know. Just sneak down there. Forget the 31 days of prayer and fasting for the church. Forgive that the church is praying and fasting for 31 days for souls that have never heard the word of Jesus. That have never committed and known the true love of God and how it absolutely consumes you in such a joy and a peace and a love that you've never known. Forget that stuff. You matter of fact, listen to your friends. If God was so real, why do you why do bad things happen to your family? If, if he was so good, why are there wars and rumors of war? Well, first of all, the Bible tells us there'll be. And it is a result of disobedience to the very one you're trying to talk to me about. But how does he know if nobody taught him? 
How does he know if nobody shared the word with him? How does he know if he doesn't know what's expected of him and what to expect from God? But the world tells him, you don't do all that. I got Nike shoes. This says, just do it. Just do what you feel like. <laughs> uh, whatever you want to do, just do it. You're young. You can go out and sin all you want to. You still have time. That's not Bible. At the age of 13, it was put on them so they had a daily reminder. You're a child of God. And you're ready for the second part? God has expectations of you. God has expectations. Matter of fact, God has more than expectations. God has given you ability. God has given you mercy. God has given you provision. God has called you to do greater. God has called you to reach other young people. God has called you to reach other souls. Change and help bless other lives. God has called you to be a fisher of men. Amen. Yes. That means you go and share this gospel that another might come. That another might find salvation. That another might see what it is that a true child of God is. We're not a joke. We're not a comment. We're not a television show. We're not a curse. We stand for holiness and righteousness. We stand for godly fear and truth. We stand for purity. Yeah, we stand for those things. And if we're so bad, why do you come to us for prayer? If we're so out of it and so stupid and so ridiculous and so weird, why is it you come to us and ask us to pray for your family members that are sick and afflicted? Why do you ask us to come to the hospitals and pray over your family members? Why do you secretly come up after work when no of the other workers are, are, are looking around going, hey, uh, could you see a high school? Listen, uh, I, I've not been feeling well. well. well could, you, could you say a prayer for me? Amen. Well, yeah, I'll pray for you right now. No, 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 you don't have to. <laughs> Just pray for me when you... But we've run into an issue. Satan has been hard at work and some of us have forgotten our phylacteries. Some of us forgot what holiness is supposed to look like. What righteousness is supposed to look like. Some of us have forgotten God's daily reminder of who we're supposed to be and who we represent. We've missed the boat. But in our mind, we're all in the ship headed toward the mark. Somehow, the enemy has tricked you into a, a, a visual art. You look like one of them people. You got them glasses on. I seen a woman the other day. She was putting on those virtual reality and she, she had to box somebody and her son was trying to help her. And, and her son was over by the door. She, she was doing like this. And, the, and then she walked up and she swung. Knocked her son out cold. She couldn't see him. Didn't know where he was. I guess it's, she could have punched the wall and broke her head too. I, I, I don't know. But knocked her son out cold. Playing with them games. Some of us act like we've got some of those visual reality glasses on. Yes. We're on the boat. <clears throat> well, we don't really understand how dark and how hot it's getting around us. We don't understand. We've forgotten who we are supposed to be. Because the world tells you you don't have to do this. 
and this is all nuts. And the Bible says in the last days that if it were possible, the very elect shall fall. We've forgotten our phylactery so much that all we heard is true Christians are going to fall. But that's not what it says. It says if it were possible that the very elect shall fall. If. In other words, it can be hard. But we got to remember our phylacteries. You got to remember whose representation you have around you. Amen. Yes. Amen. You got to remember who you represent. Yes. Our ladies with their long, beautiful hair. Who does that represent? Well, I don't feel, see, that's the thing. It's not a feeling. It's the word of God. It's not an opinion. It's the word of God. We don't go out in the world and show our flesh, bro. I don't want to see your ugly knees. God knows you don't want to see mine. They're probably as cute as your ugly elbows. <laughs> Sister Jean Johnson once, she said, we were in a class and she was teaching and she said, ladies, ain't no man attracted to your ugly legs. But more importantly, they don't like your ugly knees. Cover them up. And I just laughed. Legs, okay. Knees? No, I'm good. <laughs> oh, you can't say that? I can't. I'm married. <laughs> I don't see your ugly elbows either. They're not attractive, but I don't go around going, hey, how you doing, bro? Show me your elbows. <laughs> now, you ain't weird at all, huh? -uh. <laughs> you know why? Because we represent Christ. We represent the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. But somehow we've gotten off the path to daily stand for righteousness and all this. And I'm not talking about law. I'm talking about holiness. I'm talking about righteousness. I'm talking about people can pick you out to be a Christian because when you walk out of a building, you look like one. And your spirit, there's an anointing about you. There's an you better understand when you are a child of God, there is an authority about you. There is, there is an authority, not an authority like I'm the boss and look who I am and oh look, I got the best of the best. No, no, no. I'm talking about an authority of Christ, not cocky attitude, look who I am. I'm talking about there is something about you, a power and authority in that capacity about you to where people are drawn to you. They don't understand why. Maybe it's your kindness, maybe it's your gentleness, maybe it's your meekness, maybe it's your temperance, maybe it's your long suffering, maybe it's your joy, maybe it's your hope. Maybe Maybe it's your faith. Maybe it's your consistency. Maybe it's something. Why am I saying that? Because those are your phylacteries. Yes. The fruit of the Spirit. Don't get me wrong. The gifts of the Spirit are great. But if you're not walking in the fruit, then the gifts are useless. Amen. It's like saying it's okay. I know it's a gas mower. But I think this kerosene is going to help us start. Wow. You got fuel. You just added the wrong thing. And while you do that, I'm going to stand over here. Because I already told you, kerosene doesn't go into that gasoline does. And you just kept pouring. Something's wrong. Yeah. The Word of God 
and the reading and the studying of it is not an option. You know how we've made it an option? Hold on, I'll show you. Do you know why this isn't an option, church? Because there's too many interruptions that come with it. There's too many interruptions that come with it. This should not be your Bible study. This should be your Bible study. Because this will be interrupted with a text, with an instant message, with a messenger, with a Scott, with a dean, with a dom, with whatever it is. It, 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 it'll continue to interrupt you. This doesn't interrupt. Put that away somewhere and go into another room and study this to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not by be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Get a hold of the word, live the word, read the word, act the word, and be the word. I've said this in this church many times. I'm going to say it again. God trusts you. So why aren't you trusting him? To trust him means you live the word. You study it. You know it. Where's your Bible, brother? Hold it up high. Hold it up this way. Now quote John 4 and 12. Where's your Bible, sis? It's a beautiful Bible. Show me the outside over here. Thank you so much. Quote, quote Acts 7 and 9. Good. Oh, he's picking on them. They sat too close to the front. <laughs> I could take you to certain other people. You know, Brother Johnny James? Brother Johnny James is one of the greatest Bibles that ever lived. He could quote the Word of God, chapter and verse, anywhere you told him to start from. He could tell you where every period was, every exclamation mark was. Every quotation, every comma. I've seen it with my own eyes. No Bible on the platform. He said, and the word of God in chapter of the book of. And he started quoting, period. Da -da -da -da, semicolon, da -da -da -da, exclamation mark. And I'm like, that is exactly what it says. Yeah. You're creeping me out. Because all I know is John 3.16. Acts 2.38. Psalms 100. I'm not being mean. I'm trying to get you to understand. What if they took away that word? Will you now be the walking, talking word of God? Do you know why I said this the other day? I'm going to say it again. The reason why the word of God tells you to study yourself approved, a workman that he is not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth, is because it's the Holy Ghost that brings to your memory all things. How can it bring your memory all things if you're not in the word? It's so hard for me to memorize. We'll figure it out. Because you'll remember all the stuff at work. You'll remember what your spouse likes and don't like. You'll remember what your kids like and don't like. You'll remember what people in the church like and don't like. But you can't remember the word of God. It's just difficult for me. It's because you're not reading it. Do you know they did a study? I'm going to bring you one of those studies. Yay. They said if you... Do the same thing for 18 minutes a day. You will be better at that than 98% of all the people in the world. So if you do the same exact thing, study the same exact thing for 18 minutes a day, you will be smarter in it than 98% of the people in the entire world. 8.65 billion people.
Now please forgive me if I ask, what's the excuse again? Because some of us are on Facebook longer than that. Well, now, what about, what about listening to it on the way to work, on the way home? Well, I make my phone calls then. Yeah, call God, he's ready. Amen. Yes. Yes. That's good. Yeah. You know how many Bibles I have next to my bed? Six. And two over on the shelf. The two on the shelf is to give away to somebody that comes in here and don't have one. We have 58, 59 downstairs in my office to give away. But the six are mine. I used to have seven, but but I, I, I gave this Thompson Chain study Bible. I gave it to Brother Cameron to become the man of God that God called him to be. Why? Why'd you do that? Because I'm going to invest in our young ministry. Amen. We need to invest in everybody. Old, young, I don't care who you are, you need to be invested in. But my investment into you this morning is this. You need to study the Word of God and you need to apply it. You need to know My daughter used to read. Probably still does. But I remember when she used to come out and say, I read such and such today. And in the book of Proverbs, did you know it says this, this, and this? Yeah. You know, you have ministerial uh, leadership and you've got licensures and stuff, and they're like, okay, you got to read certain things. And somebody said, uh, Brother Daniel, what should we have? What should we require people to read to be a minister? I said, well, let's start out with the whole Word of God. And then if you feel they need to study some other books, fine. But how about we just get to where it's supposed to be and go straight to the Word of God? Amen. Amen. And then when they're done with that, have them go back and read Proverbs. And pace them out. Because when you read Proverbs, you realize the expectations that are required of you to be a child of God. Man, you, you realize what's required of you to be a man. Man, whether you learn what's required of you to be a woman. Your phylacteries. Are gifts from God. That's what that was. When he put it around his neck, it was a gift. It was a gift from God to remind you of who you are and who you belong to. Now I want to teach you something. When you choose no longer to walk with God and, and, and do what you you do this. Here, God. But God said the gift and the calling is without repentance. So you can take off the phylacteries, but that does not negate God's responsibilities that He requires of you. You can say, I'm not going to do this more, but God does no longer. He doesn't say, Well, that's fine. You're, you're, you're good. You're off the hook. Do you know how I know? Because then there wouldn't be a hell. Amen. It wouldn't exist. I don't believe in hell anyhow. Jesus preached more about hell than he did heaven. But you don't believe in it. He did. How do you know that? I just quoted it. Study to show thyself approved unto God. Why is it that we don't want to abandon the trust that the world might have on us. But we'll quickly abandon the trust that God has in us. Let me ask again, why, why is it that we don't want to let the world down? We don't want to disappoint 
our world. But we are quick to disappoint our God. Yeah. I told you when we started service, Satan is not a name. Look it up yourself. Lucifer is not a name. The devil is not a name. And demon is not a name. Those are reference titles. Their descriptions is what they are. None of them are names. Go ask a Jewish uh, scholar. If you ask him, hey, how come, how come the enemy, Satan, doesn't have a, how come it's, just, it's not his name? They'll look at you and say, because when you take somebody's name from them, you take their importance and authority away in your life. Yes. Yes. So it shocks me when I hear people tell me that they're afraid of Satan and Lucifer and the devil and the demons. You mean the no name? See, for years, nobody would name the name of God. They always said, God. They wouldn't say his name. And that was in reference to him, but they wouldn't say the name of the devil because he took his name away. Church, I'm here to tell you, you can't take God's name away anymore. Amen. You can no longer take God's name away. You can no longer take it off like it's a, it, it, it's just some necklace to take off. It's just some reminder. It is not just some reminder. It is a way of life. It is a way of breath. It is a way of eternity. It is a way of daily expectation. It, it is a way of everything you are, everything you wish to become, and everything you do. So you can pretend to take it off. But two things happen when you do. You ready? You still go to church? You still with them Jesus people? You don't act like you used to. You don't do like you used to. Really? Oh, no, I don't do that anymore. I, I, I passed that phase. I did that once. That's how I know. Yeah. See, my issue, I was following man instead of the God the man was supposed to serve. And it took God coming down and saying, Troy, uh -huh. I see you now. You got my attention. You know what he said? Have not I called you? Have not I called you? Haven't I the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? Haven't I the God of Luke, Matthew, Mark, and Paul? Lucas, Pablo. Haven't I called you? I did it personally. Yeah. I did it purposefully. Now what are you going to do? Because you can't take it off like a necklace. For the gift and the call of God is without repentance. Yes. You know what revelation God gave me? He gave me the revelation that the greatest hell for one call of God is not to go in the pit of hell and have the burning and all the other things. Instead, it is to see the faces of those that you were supposed to reach with the gospel and never did. 
dado el Evangelio y nunca se nos dice. And now there was you because of you. El infierno por culpa de ti. I assure you, Brother Cameron, that's a hell that I cannot shake my soul from. And it will be eternal. So I will preach the message. I will give the word. Whether it makes me popular or not, I don't care. I need you to go to heaven. I need you to make it. I need you to go to heaven. And I need you to take everybody that's supposed to go with you, with you. I need you to remember that God placed upon you the call. Your phylactery today is your mantle. Yeah. It's more than just something that goes around your neck. Right. It's what you're supposed to wear today. And it's what you're supposed to represent. Amen. Please stand with me. Are you wearing the mantle God called you to wear? I've heard young ministers say, I, I want to be like Gordon. I want to be like Brother Gore. Oh, he's a man of God. I love Brother Gore. He knows that. But guess what? You can't handle his calling. You were called into his ministry. He was. Oh, I like to preach like that. You can't handle mine. You were called into mine. You were called into your ministry. Your ministry affects souls the way my ministry never can. Your ministry will reach out and reach kingdom that mine never can. Yours will reach across the ocean in ways that mine cannot. Right. That's good. Because you're called. Amen. You're chosen. Amen. And God has expectations of you. Amen. Go ahead, put your man on. No, seriously, do it. Put it on. Make sure it looks good for the Lord. Stand like you represent it. Really? Because you look like you've been in a train wreck and God ain't been able to touch you. Do you know when you do this, you represent weakness? Now you represent authority. You don't have to walk in with an attitude, walk in with humility, but walk in like you represent Christ. I love Jesus. He's been so good to me. Really? Because I'm afraid to have the disease. I don't think I can serve him. We smile about. I got Jesus. Why are you always happy? Because I got Jesus all the time. What if I had made you happy? Everything. You have to try it. You'll smile more too. You won't be able to help it either. God's got you. Don't worry about it. 
Always has, always will. You see, are you wearing the mantle? Would you take it off? Mm. Are you going to do what God called you to do? Or are you going to tell him how hard it is? Or better yet, are you just going to go through the motion? Let's wash our hands, let's wash our plates. Let's wear puffy coats. Let's bring, let's bring back the shoulder pads from the 70s and 80s. Listen, God's not looking for you to look the part. He's looking for you to be the part. Amen. Yes, amen. And you become something you completely look like. Right. You completely are it. True. You represent it. True. Amen. Amen. So my question is this. Do you plan on representing him today? Or have you taken it off? Are you going to walk? I told you when I first got here. That I don't care what I have to say or who hears it. As long as I make it to heaven. Yes. And as long as I'm doing what God wanted me to do. I can care less what you hear. Now you know my testimony. God brought me out of ugly and here I am. And yeah, he's still working on me, but he's not working on me because I'm down and downtrodden and scum. He's working on me because I said, Lord, I'll give up the mess I was playing with and I'm going to follow you now. Why would I invest in you if I know you're going to blow it? Hey, mother, I want to give you $10,000 for your business. What you spend it on? Oh, I bought some new video games. I bought some playtime online. I bought a truck, but I told her it because we were out doing donuts and actually hit a light bulb. Did you do that with your money or mine? Oh, that money you gave me, it was, it was awesome. Why would we handle God's gifts that way? Why are we handling God's blessings that way? God's investing you because he knows your potential. And he knows as well as you do the expectations he has. He gave us the parable that he gave the servants. One came back and he had doubled it. One came back he had made ten times. The other came back and he buried it in the backyard. Wait, what? For the ones who did the work and were about their father's business, he blessed them. But for the one who said, Hey, I, I know that you gained where you haven't invested in. And I, I realize I'm paraphrasing a little bit. I hope you understand that. But he took from the one who buried it and gave it to the people who worked and did the work. When Jesus comes back, is he going to find you working or burying his will? Amen. Yes. Is he going to find you wearing the coat being about your father's business? Or is he going to find that man on the backyard? Decaying in the depths of the earth. My God. I don't think you understand this morning. I've been there. You don't want to go down that road. There wasn't a day that I wasn't astray that I did not hear the voice of God saying, I've called you. I've chosen you. 
You know what you do? To try to snuff it out, you dive deeper into sin. You start doing things you know you've got no right to do. You start messing with sin, you've got no right. And it gets worse and worse. What happens when you find yourself at the bottom? The devil walks up to you and says, you ain't got nothing, you should kill yourself. You, you should just take yourself out, nobody cares. Look what you've done. Look what you tried. Look what you committed. And because you think God's still far, far away. Then you hear him again, just like he always, right beside you. I've called you. I've chosen you. Yeah, but the devil says I'm useless. The devil says I'm pathetic. No, and they're all going to stare at me and judge me when I walk back in there. When have we ever done that? There's people that aren't hearing more than I said, Lord. You know if they walk in that door, I'll hug them. You know, I'll embrace it. And I'll thank you that they walked in that door. As long as they make it to him. The altar's open and the musicians are here. The word has been spoken and the promises hold true. You've put on the mantle because I've instructed you to. Even as God instructed me to. question is what are you going to do now? What are you going to do with it now? It's time. It's past time. Nobody's let you walk away. No, nobody's forgotten you. Nobody's going to love you to death. We're going to love you to life. Welcome back home. We're going to love you to life. Yes. We're not going to love you to death. We're going to love you in life all the way through. Whether it's this one or the other, we're going to love you through. Don't miss it. Don't miss what God's called you to do and what God's called you.
a small difference now. It's not what you have required. You search for steeper within through the way things appear.
to do such a wonderful job. Amen. Good job. Praise God at this time, Lord Pastor. Praise the Lord, church. Praise the Lord. Ain't God good? Yeah. And our children are wonderful to love them. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Listen, um, some of y'all know, some of you don't, but this month is uh, Pastor's Wife Appreciation Month. Our First Lady, we have an amazing woman of God who's totally committed to the kingdom. Amen. Amen. Sister Daniel, come up here, please. Month's not over yet. So the church went in. Sister Candace went to hunt. Amen. So we want to give you this as a gift from the church. Amen. They want you to open it. And she's like, well, it was this one, and it was the Canon Rebel. And I think at the time, she had the T5, and I'm like, we're going to get her the newest one. <laughs> so I was gratefully able to find the whole kit. It has uh, the camera, both lenses and the back to go with it. And we got you also a SD card. And it holds like 8,000 pictures. So you shouldn't have had room for very long. Maybe a week or two. But we're so blessed to have you, Sister Lisa, as a friend, as the mother of this church, the first lady, our beautiful pastor's wife. Sometimes I think that the pastor's wife is overlooked. She does more than we could ever think about ever understand, ever see, ever hear. We could never know the groanings and the moanings that she's called out our names in the middle of the night and sacrificed so much. She's always thinking ahead. Always. I'm like, or I could just ask her something and I'm like, do you remember where this is? She's like, yeah, it's over there. And I'm like, how do you remember that? We did that a year ago. <laughs> But God gives her such strength and the ability because he sees her heart. 
and how she remains humble and she would never ask for something like this. Never. But I believe it's our duty as the church to take care of the one who sacrificed sacrifices their body, their life for the kingdom of God. She endures much pain all the time and she never speaks a word. But she does it for the kingdom of God. Amen. And for all of us. Yes. So Sister Lise, we honor you today. We honor you this month. We honor you all year long. Because you're worthy of it. The Bible says to give honor where honor is due and we honor Yes. Amen. In everything. Sometimes it goes unnoticed. But we honor you. And we love you. And we appreciate you. Thank Amen. you for all yes. that you've done. And all you continue to do. For the glory of the kingdom of God. May you always be blessed. And may his face always shine upon you. Each and every day. For his glory. And may his strength. Be continually within you. In Jesus' name, we love you. God bless you. Amen. We stand in honor of God. you're having fun, right? So it doesn't seem like a long time because the Lord is so very good to us and he blesses us continually and he does give us strength. He is our strength. And the hope and the love that we live in is so abundant. Yes. And we are so thankful and I'm so thankful to be here with all of you and to do the, the work of the Lord every single day. It is such a blessing. It is not it is, I know we call it a burden because it is ours to carry and to, to live, but it, it's not a burden when you love. It's not a burden when the Lord is right there with you, ordering your footsteps and, and, and carrying you, right? So you walk and he's carrying you, so it's all okay. I love you. Thank you so much for this gift. Uh, you guys know how I'm going to use it. I'll be taking pictures of all of you. <laughs> So smile. <laughs> um, thank you again. I, I honor you. I cherish you. I do pray for you often, daily, and, and I'm thankful. Thank you, Pastor, for honoring me, and I honor you for being my pastor and my husband. God bless you. You been. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. At this time, hallelujah, we're going to give you an opportunity to give a tithe and offering. Amen.